Okay, I'm going to do a little uh, head study here, and then I'm going to do a little, even smaller little figure study. And you'll see this uh, with old masters too, where they'll do a primary figure, and oftentimes it will be parts of the figure. You see this, this in the, uh, the sketches of uh, Leyendecker, where the early illustrators, early American illustrators would pay, work from life. Uh, Norman Rockwell came along and started using photography and was uh, a little bit vilified for that by the other illustrators. Dean Cornwall called him that photographer. Um, but uh, typically they would uh, do the pieces, the, the key pieces of the figure, and then they'd do a whole study of the whole uh, figure, but it would be a lesser, the detailed stuff would be the head, the hands, uh, key drapery, that kind of stuff. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm going to do a little uh, head study that's uh, not super tight. It'll still be a sketch like I've been doing here in this little series, but it will have all the working parts, basically, all the important pieces. And then I'll do a little full figure. It'll be much more than just a construction of it. And you, you can see that in the famous... Uh, Sybil drawing by uh, Michelangelo, for example. You know, he, he does this uh, back, head, and arms, and hands, and then that's it. And then he's got a, a foot and a shoulder blade, and he's worked out some of the other uh, key areas, but he hasn't done the whole thing. And that was partly because he was going to end up having drapery come in from another reference source, but also that was just the way they worked. And then the little studies would be the, the full figure. Not always, but quite often that would be the case. Also, what I'll do, and this is again taken from the masters, everything I do pretty much taken from the masters, um, I'll uh, do a little study. It might be a color study, might be a drawing study, might be a little compositional sketch, um, body parts as I'm doing here. And then each time I do something, uh, do a, a, a second and a third and a fourth and a fifth and, a, and so on a study, it'll be actually looser. It'll be looser. So the first one will be tighter, really getting to know, like a careful conversation, a careful interview of a subject you're going to write about, let's say. Uh, it'll be, you'll work that out pretty carefully. Now, if you screw it up, then you'll maybe do another careful one to, to fix that, the flaws. But um, assuming you get it about right, then you'll do looser and looser to get, uh, and those become more a little more compositional. You're looking for the big rhythms as opposed to the detailed um, relationships, kind of measured relationships, if it's any kind of likeness. This is a little bit of a likeness here. Or if it just has a, uh, a, a key, uh, key types of uh, shape design or something that's going to be worked out for that piece. All that stuff's worked out in the first one where you're, you're careful, you're more tentative oftentimes because you're getting to know those things, the shapes, the likeness, if that's what it is. Uh, and then you move on from there and then you can get a little bit more creative, a little more artistic and uh, play. So notice how I'm picking up this sternocleidoid mastoid muscle. I'm going from the ear down to the pit of the neck. That's going to be something that I would pick up in those, in those uh, looser later sketches because that's going to get me from here to there. It's going to show in a quick shorthand just down the back maybe of that cable muscle. Uh, takes me out onto the breastbone, base of the neck onto the breastbone, off into shadow shapes or off down the... Uh, breastbone itself into the torso. 
So that's going to be a connecting line. It's a natural gesture, a natural um, long axis connector that's going to tie things together as opposed to an eye socket. Oftentimes we look at that eye socket and we see that as this wonderful thing that shows the eye that's so critical for a, any kind of head study. <clears throat> but then it's just that. But what I want to do is also see how it gets out of itself, gets over itself kind of, and moves on down the cheekbone, up around the forehead, into the temple area, um, off into the nose, you know, all those kind of things, in here, all those things, looking for those connectors. How does this and this and this, how do they relate? That's our real job. It's not so much what we do for any particular thing. We could do lots of things, but how they relate is the critical choice. That's uh, where we make our, that's our bread and butter. That's where we, uh, we uh, um, show our worth. Okay, so, oops, got to finish this. And oftentimes in the rendering, it'll be the half tone that uh, ties things back. So we get out of that uh, outside of the eye socket into the temple area through the half tone. The shadow ends, but the tones continue on. Subtler tones continue on. Let's get that shaded in. And so then we will go on to the next little sketch, but this is a sketchbook, so there's no pressure here. We always want to do a masterpiece, uh, but that seldom happens. Uh, so if it does, if what we do just doesn't have the value that we want it to have, then we do it again without uh, too much anguish. You know, you don't want to beat yourself up over it. You know, I wish it was better. Uh, but it's good enough, or I wish it was better, but um, it's not, and I need to do it again because I haven't gleaned, haven't gained the information, the insight. The process didn't uh, allow me to better understand or fully understand what I'm working with, so I'm going to do it again.